Hi, I'm Callum from Time Valley Motorhomes and this is the handover on the Chasson Welcome 75 which is a 2007 model. As we start we'll walk around on the driver's side of the vehicle first. You've got your little holders there for your awning legs. Should you want to wind your awning out you can pop your legs into there so it'll hang off the, the vehicle or you can peg them down into the ground. Your round headed key here operates all your locks and doors so it's up to open down a lock on the habitation door. Located next to it is your WC so this is your chemical cassette. So make sure the blades close on the bottom ball of the toilet first and you'll be able to lift the orange handle slide out. You can get fresh or no kits for this one so you can get a new cassette and a toilet seat should you want. Take the cap off, go to your waste disposal point which is normally behind or beside your toilet block. Press the yellow button, allows a bit of air in, gives it a consistent flow. You tip out, once you've tipped out, put some water in, give it a rinse, tip out again. Then if you're using the chemical form of liquid, a cap full into here of either the blue or the green and it's good to go back into the vehicle if you're using the tablets which is the new form to save a little bit of space you put a pint of water in you pull the blade cover back and you'd open the cassette lid and drop a tablet down into the cassette and then when it clicks it's good to go back into the vehicle and it's locked in you've got your external 240 volt socket so if you're hooked up to the mains this will work for power in your awning if you're dining outside and you want some power there you've got some power and then just underneath the skirt here is a handle and this is your waste water outlet so anything you've put down a plug hole goes into here and it's very important that you drain this off but especially in the winter you don't want it to freeze in that tank so you just open the handle but normally on the way out of a site you would go to your waste disposal point on your motorhome service bay for your waste water. You've got your garage door and you've got this little clip here so you can pin the garage door back. And in here you've got your tethering rail so you can move these tethering points along the rail. To tie your bikes in, your awning, your bits and pieces, you've got a full sized bare wheel and then your electric, but your bed is electric, so you've got your button here so you can go up and down. And then, located in the garage, just underneath this compartment here, is your leisure battery, which is a 105 amp New Max leisure battery. At the back of the vehicle, you've got your high level brake light and above it you've got your reversing camera. On the bottom of the van you've got your reversing sensors and then you've, it's fitted with the Fiamma 2 bike rack. So put the bike rack down. Bike wheels on the rails, these through the spokes tie the wheels down. And then you do have your bars for the crossbars. So this just clips the crossbars on. So you've got your first bike and your second bike bar there. I would advise putting a, some sort of security lock on as well when they're on the back of the vehicle as well, just in case you stop the vehicle at the services, you know your bikes are safe. Got the same access to your garage here. In here you've got LPG again open, so all the locks open with the round headed key. You fit two bottles in here. Obviously make sure the bottle's strapped in when it's in situ. It's turned on when you're on site and you turn it off before you leave site and then your pigtail is just a hand tighten so it's left hand thread to tighten opposite threads with gas and then turn on and off at the top of the bottle and this is a, a six kilogram propane bottle that it runs off so propane not butane and then you put your Truma vent for your boiler so just make sure that's not obstructed anyway so that just allows the fumes out when heating the water or the vehicle on gas or electric. You've got your two fridge vents, you've got your mains connectivity point so to hook up you get your hookup lead 
lift the collar, slide it on there, always hook the vehicle up first, then walk to your power source and just push the blue clip in the left hand corner down when unhooking. To fill with fresh water, so I'd, I would advise going to get a hose pipe because it's just most brass taps on most sites. Get a hose pipe, get the uh, thread on end and some hose lock ends. And then in here you just put your hose pipe in there until it either overflows or until you know you've got enough water on board which you can't see on the main control panel. And that's lockable as well. And to drain your fresh water off, you would undo this green cap. Say you've taken on contaminated water or you're doing the drain down the winterize for the winter. Unscrew this green cap here and allow all the water out as you wouldn't want it to freeze in the fresh water tank as it will cause a lot of damage and it will be costly to repair and then at the passenger door you've got your diesel filler which opens with the main Fiat key, the big key so that's lockable and then on the door panel itself you've got your tyre pressure so 5 bar on the front which is 72.3 psi five and a half bar on the back which is 79.5 psi underneath the passenger seat is a location of your tool kit so it's got a jack and a brace and a torn iron because it's a fade to cat oh, underneath the floor is where the engine battery lives so should you ever need to replace that you'll have to lift it out the floor and then you've got your bonnet release on the side of the dashboard so coming underneath the dashboard I should have seen the bonnet. You've got your screen wash, power steering fluid, brake fluid, radiator coolant, engine oil, and engine oil dipstick for checking your levels. Your weight plate, of course, you go off this plate. So three and a half ton gross vehicle weight. Your train weight on this vehicle, so the tr so the vehicle and whatever it's towing can't exceed four thousand seven hundred and eighty kilograms. And you've got your build number in the bottom right hand corner. For giving or receiving a jump start, you'd earth off here this little nut, lift this cover with a plus on, and that is your positive there for giving or receiving a jump start. Now inside the motorhome to lock the habitation door. You just push the catch down and as soon as you went for the trigger behind it'll open and you'll notice you've got your own unwinding handle there. Above the habitation door is your control panel so if you're hooked up like we are now on mains electric you'll get this little light here which means all your three pin plugs in the vehicle will work. When not hooked up none of these will work and it'll just be 12 volt off the main leisure battery. So your master switch is here where you turn the vehicle on or off either 12 volt or 240 if you're hooked up. You've got your pump should you be using taps such as shower, hand basins, kitchen tap or the toilet. You've got your owner light which is the light outside the vehicle and then these down the side you do have the one of the truck which is the Fiat engine battery you press that and you can view the levels there so it's showing that it's in the green so it's charged. You've got the trailer which is the motorhome leisure battery Again, shown in the green, which is charged, and then you've got your water. So you've got two thirds of fresh water. When it goes to R, it means refill, and when it's three, 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 three thirds, it is full. Obviously, when it goes to the other one, it means that the waste is, of course, full as well and needs emptying. In the kitchen area, you've got three gas rings which you'd need an ignition to light so you'd turn it on and light so if I just put you down there I'll be able to show you them lit so you may have to just hold just to allow the thermocouple to get warm there you are, you've got your three lit gas rings, allow them to cool before you put the lids down to cover them. 
then this is just showing that your water pump's working and that water is getting lovely and warm so it means your water heater's working as well and above you've got your Smev grill there you are so put your Smev grill which is lit there and you've got a light on there as well at the back All your catches within the motorhome have a travel catch on, so your overhead lock as you press the button to release the cabinet, and you've got a bit of storage in there. Put your cutlery drawer and a three pin plug, and then you've got some storage in here. Your red taps are, of course, gas taps, so these are for when the vehicle is habitation serviced. The technician will check the gas is working accordingly to the NCC standards. Any problems with gas, turn the bottle off to be safe. And then operate your Fetford fridge, so you turn on and off here. This is your energy source, so at the moment we're on gas, which self ignites on gas, so you'd use gas if you were wild camping, because you wouldn't have access to mains hookup, and of course you wouldn't want the engine running all the time for 12 volt, which only is designed to keep the temperature the same. So it won't make it any colder, it'll just keep it at what it is currently set at. You've got the plug which is mains 240 hookup when you're on a site. And you've got battery there and it's code 10, it's failed because we are, the engine is not running. So if you're lucky enough to keep this at home, the day or two be, before you go on your holidays, hook the vehicle up, the night before put your obviously put the fridge on the night before put your shopping in allow it to cool overnight and then when you are ready if you just put on a battery as soon as you start the engine it'll get a feed from the alternator of 12 volt and it'll turn this into a giant Hello, cool box and it'll keep your shopping nice and fresh until you arrive back on site or if you're wild camping you can go on to gas or electric on this side you've got your temperature so you've got five bars being the cool, coldest. Some people say you may just want to drop it to four, just because five can be too cold. Coming across to the washroom area. So you've got your bathroom light here, which is on the small rocker switch on the side of the sink. Top rate the toilet, ensure the pump's on and you've got enough water in the tank. Press the button there and you'll see it's flushed. So flush the toilet first, then what you want to do is you want to open the blade, which is by this grey handle, so slide it to the right. Use the toilet once you've flushed it. Once you've used the toilet, if you flush again, and then you just slide to the left and isolate the blade, which shuts the cassette, which means if you need to change it, you can get it out without it being stuck. So if the cassette ever becomes stuck, it's because the blade's be left in the open position, but always do it this way because it lubricates the blade and obviously it makes everything go into the cassette and not flood around the cassette, which would then be a, quite a messy job. The man on the back, or the person on the back, the light will come on when it's ready to empty the cassette got toilet cabinets in here you've got a window so you just press the buttons in same with all the windows on the vehicle release the window push out push all the way out to bring it in and then you do have a fly screen and a blackout blind for running evening and did to depart the two press and it'll come Put your hand basin tap there. And again, your water's getting the temperature on this tap as well. Your shower screens have got this little press stud on when travelling to keep the screen back. So if you've got a break, it's not going to start shooting around the bathroom. But when winterising again, if you leave all the mixer taps open in the middle position. Remove your shower head from your shower hose. As you can see, any water will coil in this hose and allow it to lie in the tray and anything will just drain directly out. You'd have your waste open, you'd have your fresh open and you'd have your boiler, which I'll show you 
when I'm going through the handover. You can open the skylight. So if you've used a shower, you can open that for ventilation or if it's a nice day and you want a bit of fresh air coming into the washroom, you can do as well. At the back of the vehicle, you've got your transverse bed, which is controlled electrically by underneath by the switch. So depending on what you've got in the garage, the bed can go up higher than the garage door or come down to a lower point should you want to gain access to it if you've got nothing in. You've got storage in the steps here to gain access to the bed. You can get up. You've got storage along the back in the cupboards. See that cable's just for your reversing camera there. You've got your light switches. You've got another one here for this light. And then to heat the vehicle. So this is your Truma. Trumatic C control here. So off in the middle. You turn up for 60 degrees of heating your water on gas. 40 degrees of heating your water on gas. So if you just wanted water on its own in the summer, don't want to heat the vehicle, it would be these two. 40 degrees you normally use for showering, 60 you would use for doing your dishes. And then off in the middle on the O, heating on its own. So heating on its own, on gas. And then you've got one to nine, so nine being the highest being 30 degrees. So this is your thermostat and then Heating and hot water at the bottom on gas of heating your water, 60 degrees and heating the vehicle. And then you would choose your temperature. In the wardrobe area you do have obviously hanging rail for your clothes. All your 12 volt fuses so it would be a good idea to carry some spares just in case a fuse did blow, they're just standard blade fuses, so you can just pop one in, fix your issue. You've got your charger here, so when this is turned on and you're hooked up, so just leave it on. As soon as you hook up, it starts charging the leisure battery. You've got all your trips, so should your kettle or hairdryer trip the vehicle out, you can try here before you try your main sight, just to make sure it hasn't tripped the circuit in the vehicle. And then you've got your status TV aerial, so When you get your green light, it means it's found a signal. Should it be orange or red, it requires the aerial to be moved. So what you need to do is you need to loosen the nut off, push the aerial up and use the toggle to direct the aerial on the roof so it'll just move it. But a good tip is to point them in the location of the other motorhomes and caravans on your site. And obviously when traveling, pull the stem in and securely fasten the nut just to stop the aerial being ripped off by the wind. And you do have a min and a max here, so you can maximize the TV signal booster or minimize it should you need. Below, so it opens with the same key as the locker outside, is your location of your boiler. So your boiler holds 10 litres of water at any one time. In the winter, it's very important that you drain this off by using the dump valve, which I'll show you further in the handover but you'd have to drain this down because if you didn't obviously the water can freeze in here and this is very expensive to repair or replace and isn't covered under the warranty. So you drain this, drain your fresh and your waste from outside, leave all the taps open within the vehicle and remove your shower head. To swivel your seats, pull the catch back, pull the seat forward and then turn round into the rear. And that's both driver and passenger.